Hi guys, welcome back to Tom Mods Things and today we're going to be fixing this bike. Only kidding, we're definitely working on this heap. Right, so what we're doing today, so uh, we've had delivery of a few new components, uh, racing parts, uh, which I will show you guys in a sec, but maybe not the uh, entire sort of, uh, sort of racing parts you would expect. Um, effectively, what we are doing is, I'll flick it around. We've gone and made a purchase. So what we have here uh, is, and some of you will know of these, some of you will not, but we have an eBay uh, induction kit because I uh, couldn't, couldn't quite find one that would definitely fit this uh, engine type because as we know from previous videos, it's a bit of a weird one being a 1.6 XS, uh, which means that it's kind of got bits from kind of all of the various uh, 106s and, uh, and Saxos kind of merged into this sort of Frankenstein uh, engine bay at the moment so it doesn't quite fit certain things uh, mainly to do with uh, where the inlet is on this it's obviously different to like a normal 1.6 um, but then this isn't then normally on those 1.6s anyway so you kind of can't get something that fits around this and then a normal one litre and stuff doesn't have this which means that then a pipe could go across here but anyway loads of stuff that means that this isn't quite going to be as easy as it is so what we decided to do was to literally just bang an ebay cheapest thing that we could find universal induction kit and we will see how universal it actually is right so first things first what we'll do is we will unbox the filter side of things obviously the bit that's going to be sucking in all the air now we had to go for a proper chromey boy because uh, i mean what's not more max power than a nice carbon chromey filtery goodness so we've got this bad boy as the uh, filter which hopefully we can get to fit and then what we went for with the induction is because we haven't decided on sort of color or anything like that i've kept it really sort of simple for the moment so what we have in here is reducing coupler silicon thing and then we've got the pipe with this beautifully uh, crafted fake carbon which looks absolutely nothing like what carbon would do if you made it into a pipe but anyway this is what we've got so we've got this aluminium tube we've got breather pipe um, and then sort of a load of miscellaneous brackets and various other like hose clamps and stuff and I think yep pretty much it right so these are the bits that we've got effectively what they want you to do is to have this on this end like this which reduces it down to where your um, intake would be and then this I believe then sort of chucks on the end here so uh, what we are going to do is we will lay this in here because I haven't actually tested it yet so we'll see exactly what needs to go on I am imagining that I'm probably going to have to fabricate something to make this fit notoriously the universal parts are not universal at all they just kind of get you near enough and then you have to kind of fabricate and make bits up to actually make them work but anyway as this only cost whatever it was 12 15 quid off ebay we're going to make it work and uh if it's terrible then ah well it'll be a funny video anyway so anyway let's lay this in and see how close it is right so here we go laid it in got our light on top so yeah i guess this is kind of looking like it's going to work i think with where it's positioned got kind of this gap here which i think what we'll end up doing is we'll replace this sort of joining piece and i reckon what we could probably do to make this work because it kind of looks like it sort of fits relatively well um i haven't actually closed the bonnet yet because obviously we've got these bad boys and i'm fully expecting this to go go full send straight out the bonnet which is uh, going to be interesting uh, but we will see that in a sec because I don't think uh, no, I can't really get it any closer I mean we could I'm going to need to get the battery in there really to see this because I think on some of them you could we might be able to make something which vents it down here as well but then the headlight's going to go in there which is going to block that so that's not going to work um, so I think something like this is probably the best position and then uh, looking at see if I lay that in there so yeah then looking at the distance we've got here I kind of think that looks approximately like 10 centimeters or something we could probably get away with 
and then I reckon we could do sort of a 3D printed one to start with. So what I could do is take some dimensions, uh, then sort of draw up a quick uh, drawing to sort of influence what I'm going to do in the CAD. I can then build it in CAD, chuck it in our 3D printer upstairs, and then bish bash bosh, we can get this uh, kind of mounted up as a sort of provisional thing to just see if it's going to work. Uh, what we could do actually is just get rid of this this like mount here because that doesn't actually look like we're going to need it because we can mount it off of this one instead, um, which will then bring that sort of a lot closer um, and we'll be able to get it slightly further down. It's a shame really that there's this uh, sort of pipe for the um, intercooler in the way really to be honest because we'd be quite well placed to just bin that off. Well, well, we need it obviously, but yeah, if this wasn't there and we could route it maybe a different way, that would probably open up our options. But anyway, so let's, um, let's see how obnoxious and screwed we are when we actually close the bonnet then, because uh, as I say, I think that's going to be a um, different kettle of fish, so. <laughs> okay, I think I think we might be kind of screwed. Um, I mean, it's, it, it's going to get it's going to get cold air. I mean, I suppose that's that's what it's meant to do. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll come over the top here and get sucked in, but that is just going to be effectively a bucket for uh, all the rainwater, which is um, not particularly what you want with an air sort of filter, but I suppose what we could do is get a, we could make a, a shroud for it. So effectively like a chrome piece that kind of sits over the top of this cone and then the sort of you'd hope that the rainwater would hit that and then sort of dribble down the outside kind of into the realms of the uh, the engine because obviously we're already directly going on top of our uh, our resource manifold which is obviously this is the, well I mean it's cooling you sort of heat wrap things so I guess uh, sort of having water injection um, sort of spray onto that is probably a good thing um, so yeah anyway looks like a little bit of work to do right we'll just chuck the battery in just to make sure that that's the thing that doesn't uh, hold us up either I mean it looks it looks like it's possibly gonna work maybe um, I think we can try I mean really if we had a slightly smaller cone uh, it would be absolutely fine but because we've gone for this absolute monstrosity um, it's uh, proving maybe slightly more problematic. Well, I got it, and as you saw on our last episode, we have these uh, crusty uh, springs and shocks and everything that we've uh, taken out of the car. And then it just so happens that I was on the marketplace of faces, and uh, these came up online, which is uh, pretty cool. So, what's interesting about this, and I know TA Technics people in the comments are going to go, they're rubbish, this, that, and the other, but they were really really cheap and also they were only the fronts as well which ironically is the only bit that we need because we're keeping the saxo uh, vtr rear end the shocks on that are okay everything looks kind of like it's been replaced at some point fairly recently compared to everything else so uh, actually just having the fronts on this was a, a godsend really it was perfect so um, i've already kind of briefly opened this just to kind of check that most bits are there so i'll just flip this lid off quickly now Boom, like that. So right, what we've got in here, and some of the bits have obviously been opened so that um, like, I think you, so you can take pictures and stuff, but everything is kind of loosely in here. You can see stuff is still sort of brand new, never been used. Uh, the only bit that's sort of in here still that has been is uh, is this one. So we've got our new springs, we've got these pieces, which I believe are the bits that go over our um, original uh, strut and everything and then obviously got the uh, the shocks as well so got these two uh, to replace basically our horrible stuff that's on here so what we're going to do with this I think is uh, we'll pull everything out we'll lay it out kind of on the bench I'll need to obviously clear some room for that um, and then we can make sure that we've got actually everything there's some stuff in this box here as well which I think is going to be the miscellaneous bits like these pieces and stuff that we're uh, sort of missing at the moment um, and yeah then what we can do is start to strip this one down um, then we can start to clean up all of this hub wire brush everything get it all looking really nice um, and then we can just look at starting to piece together the new um, shocks on top uh, we'll be obviously replacing top mounts and, and all the sort of miscellaneous bits that will get used again um, or not get used again but the, the sort of OEM parts that get used um, and so we'll then have a completely new strut assembly which will be awesome. So we've got our two new top caps, these are the bits that screw on that give you the purchase for your springs and everything and then obviously your height adjustability on this piece as well so uh, yeah looking, uh, looking pretty good. Then uh, we've got our two uh, sort of sweet spanner and also this one which I'm guessing is used for tightening up the uh, top of this onto the OEM struts. 
got our two shock absorbers, one with the tag still on it, the one without. Uh, then these are our top cap pieces, so these basically sit kind of in the top of the spring, I think, on the other side. And then um, this then is where the um, uh, sort of centre bore is for locating the uh, top mount on the top of it. And then obviously uh, our two springs as well. Um, I reckon, yeah, well, we're probably just going to absolutely slam this, to be perfectly honest, just as a starting point, just to see uh, kind of where it sits, and then we can adjust it up from there. I've heard these can be quite crashy. Um, because the shocks end up bottoming out so what we'll probably do is just chuck in some small bump stops because they obviously aren't on here at all so uh, we'll chuck in some small bump stops and then uh, we'll just see how it goes to be honest this is going to be way better than uh, anything that's obviously on this mess at the moment anyway so um, it's always going to be a plus because we're going to act a little bit safe we've got some uh, spring compressors so we're just going to uh, whip these on kind of wherever we can get and then we're just going to wind them up and uh, uh, compress the spring so that when we uh, whiz off the uh, top mount the thing doesn't fire off like an absolute bazooka um, even though these ones probably won't because the coil's been cut um, to obviously make it as low as it was previously. Right, just like that guys, uh, we've now got two shocks, springs all off, box full of all the old junk, so we'll leave that. Uh, I've kept all of these bits here just uh, out of curiosity really more than anything because um, I think it's worthwhile just keeping hold of some of these bits just in case certain things like these cap pieces for example that we need but they're difficult to get hold of because these are actually out of metal, uh, just surface rust so we can just sort of sand these up and then respray them if we need to. Um, and then obviously we don't know kind of what bits we do and don't need these are the, uh, the top mounts for example um, so at the moment we sort of don't know exactly what is and isn't on this car because it's a bit of a weird model so um, uh, what I thought was probably better was just to um, kind of keep all the bits that we need to at the moment probably not and not use them but at least then we've got a reference point to go back to should we um, struggle to find the bits that we need so anyway back onto this so what I think we need to do now is um, kind of what I'll do is I'll probably clamp this in the vise and I can see the threads underneath here um, and then effectively I think do we just get like a sort of a chisel or something and put it in here and then effectively just bash this round until uh, it kind of comes off and then the whole shock should be able to come out then we need to work out how we're going to get rid of this plate piece um, I think we could probably just heat it up and then just sort of whack it with a dirty great big mallet and that'll probably uh, that'll probably do the job just as well um, so yeah, effectively what we'll do now is we'll just clamp this up, we'll bash this off, and then we can get the shock out of it. And I don't know if anyone can tell, but I'm definitely learning on the job at the moment because I've never done any like anything on this sort of uh, platform before. So uh, if I'm doing it incorrectly, apologies, but hopefully we'll get there in the end. Right, and then just to show you how this works, I'll try and get into a bit of light. So effectively what there was, was there's this retaining piece that was on here. Basically we just heated that up and then just whacked it with a dirty great big mallet, which is over there, which is what you just saw. And then out slides the shock absorber. So effectively that just literally just retains it within the, um, uh, within the actual strut body itself. Obviously this whole thing there, so it just slides all the way through this hole. Um, and so effectively what is going to be replacing that piece that I just took off is this which should, once we've removed this bottom piece as well, slide over the top, screw into place, and then um, we kind of get like this purchase piece and we can do some sort of adjustment, it looks like, with this. Um, yeah, we will uh, we'll work out exactly what we need to do in a sec. But yeah, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, I think we've probably just gotta heat this bit up and then just sort of just twat it with, a, uh, with the persuasion stick. Um, and then hopefully this whole thing should come off. If not, we're gonna have to get out the sparky boy again and then just sort of just start lopping it straight off so catch you guys in a sec all right and there you saw a bit of persuasion bit of heat and then job done this says whole thing's boshed off so uh now we are left with kind of the job of the cleanup really because obviously we're not going to put it back in the car like this obviously this bit needs to be cleaned up so that the new piece can sleeve over the top so what we'll do is we'll now take this one off do the other one on the floor and then um, and then we can start to work through kind of all the other parts of this which we need to do which is sort of bearings and other various sort of miscellaneous bits as well just to get it all working properly and cleaned up and looking lovely this is what we're left with so we've got two struts obviously as i said a minute ago we need to um, tidy these up big time so we're going to get some brake clean and and uh, and get the old bristly boys out these ones and then um, we're just going to go to town on these to get them all nice and clean so that they're all tidied up a few moments later
Right, there we go, guys. Some fully built struts. So, as you can see, what we've done is we've uh, uh, taken back and repainted our hub, uh, sort of the suspension sort of strut system. Uh, we've then mounted on our TA Technics kind of collar piece, which is the threaded piece that you see underneath here. Um, and then we've got the TA Technics, obviously the springs over the top of it in the red. Um, and then we've then got the, uh, the normal sort of standard uh, uh, top mounts and all the bushings and stuff that go with that. Uh, what we, as you would have seen from what, well, what I talked about earlier was that we'd um, cover up the threads that were on the inside of the collar so that you can um, easily adjust it up and down. We've not done that for the moment because um, obviously we don't know sort of how high or low the car's going to sit. Uh, kind of based around what we've done which is effectively absolutely slam it so it could be that this is way too low and we need to raise it up so there's no point doing the threads right now because uh, we may as well set the ride height first we're not going anywhere with it so um, we can then set it take them back off again then we can wrap everything back round, and then we can make sure everything is set up properly before they finally go in there and get sorted uh, what we did actually come across when we did start to um, uh, pull everything apart is actually uh, the struts that were on here previously are these AVO units. Now actually what I didn't realise because the other one actually uh, the top of it snapped off but these are actually uh, as you can see there um, adjustable dampers so uh, no idea sort of how expensive these are or not or whether it's even worth sort of rebuilding them but we're going to keep hold of them for the moment anyway because it might be that we rebuild those and do a separate um, sort of suspension setup with a few different uh, pieces if we for whatever reason don't like the TA Technics versions. So yeah so with those bits done uh, we're sort of well on our way really to start rebuilding all the suspension on this thing. Um, uh, what we will probably do now is we need to finalise all the tie rods which I'm still struggling with at the moment to try and get those sorted um, and then as soon as we've done that we can start uh, properly rebuilding the suspension in the, the sort of uh, point of actually sort of putting everything back in, getting wheels all mounted, all the brake, new brakes, new discs, new pads, calipers all refurbed, everything then goes back on um, and then the car can then be sat back down and then uh, at that point we can move it kind of in and out of the garage which is going to be sort of the absolute main aim at the moment because we need that to happen so yeah thanks all uh, for watching uh, cheers for tuning in with uh, all the content and stuff if you like it don't forget to subscribe because uh, obviously there's more of this coming and it's now as you can see really starting to progress so anyway uh, take care everyone and i'll catch you guys in the next one see you later